Well, good morning and welcome again to our next Kingdom Kids video. We have been following the story of Moses and Moses was called by God from the burning bush to do a very special job. His job was to lead the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt into a special promised land that God had provided for them. And we heard how God did miracles in um, taking them through the Red Sea. And then they last week we heard all about their wandering in the desert and their complaining and moaning to God because they didn't have enough water. They didn't have enough food. And God gave them some incredible miracles. He provided water from the rock and he provided manna, that special bread that came down every morning uh, like the dew, and they could gather it every morning. Wasn't that incredible? And yet they still moaned and complained to God. And sometimes uh, they, they forgot that God had done such incredible things, that he had looked after them and protected them and that he was going to be with them on this journey. And God is like on our journeys too. Whatever we're doing, wherever we go, God has promised that he will be with us like he was with Moses. And sometimes we forget, don't we? And we can be scared. Sometimes we can forget that God is with us. But today we're going to be thinking about that and the promise that he will always be with us. And we're going to sing that song to begin with called God Suit On. And Pippa and Jasper do some incredible actions to help us as we sing this song. But it reminds me that um, when we put on our God suit, when we remember those promises that God has made to us, we need not be afraid. Maybe you're going back to school soon. Uh, maybe you're feeling a bit anxious about that. But you don't need to because God will be with you. So let's sing that song as we begin our time together today.
I got my god suit on this way, this way. I know you with me every step I take. everyone my name's Kat and the story that we're going to be looking at today is one called Spies in Canaan. When the Hebrews finally arrived at the edge of the land their God had promised them they were still unhappy. We're worried, we're frightened, what if something bad happens when we get there? So they asked Moses to send spies into the land. They wanted to know exactly what lay ahead. There were 12 spies, one for each of the Hebrew tribes. They tiptoed into the promised land. They hid behind bushes. They peeped out from behind boulders and they had a good look around. Then they sneaked back across the border and told their people about everything that they had seen. At first, the report sounded quite good. The land is wonderful. There's loads of food. Just look at the size of these grapes. But some of the spies had other things to say. The cities are surrounded by enormous walls. The people are giants and they make us look like tiny, tiny little grasshoppers. Wait, cried the two other spies whose names were Joshua and Caleb. God has promised this land to us and he will help us to win it no matter how big our enemies are. But it was too late. The Hebrews had already started complaining again. They'll kill us all and take our wives and children to be slaves. Oh, why, oh, why didn't we stay in Egypt? God was angry when he heard this. Angry that his people still did not trust him, even though he had already saved them from so much. So he sent them back into the wilderness and told them that they must wander there until they stopped complaining. And so they did. They wandered for 40 years until their children were grown and everyone who had complained was dead. Everyone but Joshua and Caleb, the two spies who had trusted God. At long last, it really was time for God's people to stop wandering in the wilderness. So Joshua and Caleb led the Hebrews across the Jordan River into the promised land. And this time there was no moaning or complaining only cheering and grateful thanks. We've arrived, we're home, we're here at last. What a wonderful story of how faithful God is to his promises and how we can trust him no matter what situation we're in. So we're now going to hand hand over to the Sandors who are going to lead us in King of My Heart. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Let 
God told Moses, send men to scout out the land of Canaan. I am giving this land to the Israelites. Moses sent out one leader from each family tribe. He told the men what to do. Go see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. Moses had a lot of questions. Is the land good or bad? Are the cities they live in camps or forts? Is the land good for farming? Are there any trees? Moses said, be courageous. So the men went and scouted out the land. They traveled around the land for 40 days. They cut down a cluster of grapes in the valley and carried it on a pole. Then they went back to Moses, Aaron, and the Israelite community to tell them what they saw. The land is good. It is flowing with milk and honey, they said. But the people living in the land are strong, and the cities they live in are large and well protected. 
Then Caleb, one of the spies, said, We must go up and take possession of the land. We can certainly conquer it with God's help. But the other men disagreed. The people are stronger than we are. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. The Israelites were afraid and they cried all night. They thought Moses and Aaron had brought them to Canaan to die. The Israelites said, Let's appoint a new leader and go back to Egypt. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the Israelites. Joshua and Caleb, who had both scouted out the land, tore their clothes and said to the Israelites, The land is extremely good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will give it to us. Don't be afraid of the people living in the land. God is with us. The Lord spoke to Moses. How long will these people despise me? How long will they not trust me? God threatened to destroy all the people. But Moses said, Please forgive the wrongdoing of the people. I know you are great, faithful, and loving. God replied, Since you have asked, I will forgive them. But none of them who despise me will live to see the promised land of Canaan. Since Caleb and Joshua had followed God completely, God would let them enter the promised land. God said that the Israelites, who did not trust God, would face consequences for their sin. They would wander in the wilderness 40 years, and they would not enter the promised land. All of the spies who went to scout out the land died, except for Joshua and Caleb. Caleb and Joshua trusted God. God planned for Joshua to lead the next generation of Israelites into the promised land. Joshua was not perfect, but his faithfulness reminds us of Jesus, who is perfect. Jesus obeyed the Father and trusted his plan to save people from their sins. Wasn't that great? We loved that story, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So God's people went in, check out the land, what's it like? Some of them came back and said, no way. That situation is too big for us. We are not strong enough. They saw strong people, they saw big cities, and they said, in our own strength, there's no way that we can live there. But they were looking at it through their own eyes, what they could do in their own strength. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, looked at it not through their own eyes, but through God's eyes. How strong is God? What is God capable of doing? We found a favourite verse from that story and we have put it onto some card. I love decorating Bible verses. Okay, so have a look at this. Some of you might be able to read it. It says, the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. And we find that in the book of Numbers, Mm -hmm. chapter 14, verse 9. So we are going to teach you in a moment a great way to remember that verse and remember that God is always with us and we don't have to be afraid of big situations. But the good news is it's exactly the same for us today, just like it was for Joshua and Caleb. It's the same for us today, isn't it? So any situations that we face that we think are a bit too tough for us, a bit too difficult, how am I going to be able to do that? We can know that God is with us and therefore we don't have to be afraid of those situations. I don't know what it might be for you. It might be a piece of difficult schoolwork. You think, it's just too tough for me. I can't do it. My head doesn't work that way. We can ask God for help and see it through his eyes. It might be being asked to share with your brother or sister that your parents always ask you to do, but it's just so tough because it's mine and I want to play with it. It might be keeping your temper when you just want to explode, whatever it is. We can remember that God is with us. And we can use his strength. So we've been having a little think, haven't we, boys, about Mm -hmm. things that we find Mm -hmm. tough and big situations that feel too big for us. And how could we look at it through God's eyes and ask for his help? So Mackenzie, you were thinking of an example from this week, weren't you? What happened to us this week? Um, Yeah, we have um, a cat called Trooper and um, uh, he, we let him out, but um, he didn't come back for the whole night. Um, And in the morning we prayed and prayed and... um, uh, just as we were going out to look again and hand, hand out posters, um, our neighbour came round um, with him. So that shows um, what God can do. We really didn't know what was going to happen, no. did we? We didn't know where else to look, we didn't know what was going to happen. He might have been hurt. 
you might and have. We, but we and were so grateful. We asked for God's help. And Denver, tell us about your example. Because you said you have something you're sometimes a bit scared about. Scary dreams. Yeah. Go into because bed. It all, because it always feels like Mackenzie doesn't... Because he sleeps in my room. He doesn't have loads of crazy powers or anything. <laughs> so I quit, feel quite lonely. And Mackenzie today thought he could, that Trooper could have died. Oh yeah, well these situations yeah. can be scary, can't they? Whether it's losing a pet or whether it's worrying about going to bed because it's all dark and you think, oh, might I have a scary dream? Yeah. But we can give these things to God, know that he's with us and see what he can do in his strength. So let us teach you our verse. The Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them, of any of those situations. Okay, so get your hands ready. These are our actions. This is going to be your Bible. It's a closed book. It's a Bible. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say it is from the book of Numbers. Numbers. Chapter, chapter 14. 14. Open your Bible and close it again. Verse, verse 9. nine. Verse nine. Then we're going to say the Lord, the Lord is, is with us. us. Do not be afraid of them. Okay? Helps us to remember it, doesn't it? Let's try it again. So, show me your Bibles. Numbers. Numbers. 14. 14 9. 9. The Lord, the Lord is, is with, with us. us. Do not, Do not be afraid of them. Okay, let's try it again. Can you do it without the words? Let's just do the actions. So... Fantastic. We can always remember that God is with us to help us. We can see things through God's eyes. How strong is he? What is he capable of doing? So we do not need to be afraid of those situations that we find big and scary. And now, Julie, over to you for some craft. Bye. Bye. Wow. I don't know about you, but when I heard that story, I was thinking about those Israelites and all the things that happened to them. And I thought... Gosh, they must have experienced so many different feelings. Sometimes they'd be worried or frightened or grateful or happy. So much going on. And that made me think, well, you know, God really cares about how we feel. So for our craft today, I thought we'd think about that. All you need is an empty jar, clean one, and some bits and pieces and you can turn your jar into a prayer jar because I think those Israelites, they would have been praying all the way along their journey into the promised land. So you'll need some little bits of paper and a pen to write your prayers on. But also I thought it'd be nice if you could decorate your jar. I looked around the house and I found all sorts of bits and pieces. I found an awful lot of red buttons. I also had... Lots of stickers to hand, some googly eyes. You might be able to find some pretty ribbon or tissue paper. Just have a look around and see what you can find. And then you can decorate your jar. Here are a few that I made earlier. I've got a neighbour who's not very happy at the moment. She's feeling very lonely. And whilst we do go out for walks and have a good chat, she's really missing her family because they live in a different part of the country and she's just not able to visit them yet. So I've written a little prayer on my piece of paper for her, asking God to help her, to give her strength and to make her feel a bit more positive. So once you've written your prayer, it could be about struggling with your lessons on Zoom. It could be about... Um, being stuck in the house more than you'd like to be, or it could be a thankful prayer saying, thank you God for the beautiful snow we had recently or the, or the blue sky, whatever it is, pop it in your jar, pop the lid back on, and then you might like to go back to the jar in six months, take your pieces of paper out and read them and just see how God answered your prayers. And it would be really good if some of you who have made prayer jars could send pictures of them into church at info at cctw.org.uk we'd love to see the things you've made i wonder what great things you can come up with we can see next time
Thanks everybody for watching. And I'm just going to pray before we go. Father God, thank you that you are interested in every single thing that happens to us in our lives. And we pray for you to help us when we feel upset or unhappy, worried. We want to ask you to help us to manage those feelings and to find somebody to talk to as well as you, Lord. And we just thank you that you care for us and everything in our lives. Amen. See you next time. <music>